Um, good morning, Southwestern. Um, my name is Nadja, and I'm not in the art therapy program. I'm in the counseling program. Um, but as you can probably see behind me, I do dabble in a lot of um, the needle arts. Um, and I recently had an opportunity to learn um, hand spinning yarn. And um, it was really, it's a really amazing process. And um, I will also write out a proposal about it. But I wanted to do a video to show you because part of why it's so soothing is seeing, um, seeing it happen. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, first thing I'm going to start with is a skirt I got. It's a, actually a fabulous skirt. I'll hold it still for you and it's um, reversible silk. Um, I got it in a thrift store in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, but I've had it for years and years and years and had some kind of fabulous experiences in it and kind of not so fabulous experiences in it and I don't wear it anymore. Um, and okay, that's not lie about that. Part of why is because it doesn't fit me anymore. And so there is a piece there. Um, so what really I'm going to do is take this that <laughs> is something, exists in its form. I'm going to change that form um, and turn it into something new and useful again, something I'll use and I can still love it, um, not throwing it away and, um, and I getting to work in this process, um, in, in the meantime, which is pretty cool. So the first thing I need to do is to make this fabric into strips. So, um, let's make that happen magically. Okay. So, um, Here's my strips of fabric. Um, and because I was using a skirt, which is a, a cylinder, I was able to get one just really long strip out of the whole thing. Um, but you could do it with, like if I was using a shirt or something and there would be a lot of strips. Um, there's another cool piece of this that's kind of about incorporating little pieces of thing to make one long piece. So again, that kind of theme of deconstructing and reconstructing. But now we're ready for um, the spindle and the spindle is my favorite part of this. This is a top down drop spindle. And I can guess a lot of reasons why it's called that, um, but I don't think it's important in this moment, but um, I made this out of things um, that were already in this form at Hobby Lobby. So I didn't have to cut anything. Um, I actually didn't even have to glue anything because um, they just fit in tightly together. Um, and I spent $20, but I got eight spindles out of that. So um, it was really inexpensive. And um, one of the things I, is my favorite thing about it, is that um, the spindle spinning is ancient, ancient, ancient. Um, so this would be the first ways, um, I guess is the theory, that people found to take wool and make it into a usable form. So um, we're talking like Babylon, Mesopotamia, um, old, old technology and old ways of doing it. So um, even think of before, so people were able to sew leather, right? But um, this technology predates sewing fabric. So, um, and it's just, you know, you don't have to alter it much. It's still really good. And I think at the school we do a lot of um, rituals and, and kind of ancient ways and looking at um, how indigenous and, and older cultures do things and um, I guess my pitch is just to throw this in that hat because um, it, it's definitely just as old and just as much of a way and I do think there's an important um, healing aspect to spinning and I guess I'll show you that now. Uh, this process is a lot about balance, right? So um, even the strips. So you want thin strips. You want them to be thin enough um, that your yarn isn't too bulky. But um, if it's too thin, it'll break. So about finding the balance in the size. Um, 
as you spin, you don't want the spinning of the spindle. Um, if it's too fast and too hard, your yarn will be too tight to work with. So you want to find a, a good balance, but if it's too loose, um, I guess it doesn't happen. It'll, you'll get an uneven yarn, but um, when you're working with wool, it makes the wool weak. So you, you know, you need just enough force to make it kind of twist together and become yarn, but not quite so much force that, that, um, sorry, <laughs> not so much force that, that it, it tightens it up too fast. Um, Oh, and speaking of speed, um, I probably should have mentioned this when we were talking about the strips of fabric. Um, and I know everybody's process will be their own, and that's awesome. Um, personally, for me, I don't like tearing it. Um, there's this, I guess, this um, kind of satisfying gestalt. Um, there's a great word for it that I'm not thinking of in this moment. Um, cathartic you know, thing to taking it, and especially if maybe there are some really strong, maybe, um, less feeling good, <laughs> not the most eloquent video, um, emotions or things attached to it, um, I could see why just ripping it would feel good, uh, but the problem with ripping it in kind of one another area of metaphor is that um, you need, again, some kind of uniformity to the pieces. So it's going to change, but you want it to change in a way that it's still useful. So if you just tear it asunder, then all you're kind of left with is this pile of something that once was something else. But um, if you do really go kind of slowly and consciously about it, then you can, you know, you're, you are destroying it, you are taking it apart, but in a way that's maybe not too fast to fully process, it's not traumatic, um, maybe if you're going slower it might, you know, everybody's process is their own, um, but, um, and, and you have a little control of, of, of the product and what it's going to be um, in, the f in the future, and you have some say-so in that, and, uh, in a, and I think that's important too. So as you can see, I'm working, um, and I think that's probably why I'm having trouble talking, is because um, it, I think it incorporates a lot of the practices we try to, we, we try to incorporate, or I'm learning to incorporate. So being mindful, I have to be um, aware of what's going on here. Um, if I don't pay attention, then it doesn't, you know, you lose it, it'll stop winding, it'll do something else that's crazy. Um, there's also, yeah, there's that mindful piece, but there's also um, a really tactile piece that I like about it. Um, it's very soothing, um, and it also keeps me in my body as I'm working. So I'm not just in my head about processing this, right? I'm, I'm actively um, and in my body taking part in transforming this. So, you know, if I can imagine that this is um, someone's metaphor for an experience um, that, that could be either really um, they have positive association with or negative, um, being mindful and, and present, that would be the word for it, of being in the activity and being present for the transformation. So, um, like, an, the opposite to me of that would be like if when you dye something, um, you kind of put it in the vat of dye and you walk away and come back and it's another color, right? But you really can't do this. There's no kind of automatic to hand spinning. It's just, um, it just is. And you have to be there and be a part of, of each part of that change, which I think is really important.